Welcome to our second lesson about the internal Geneva mechanism. In this lesson, we'll create an assembly. Let's get rolling. We'll go to the Manage tab. Click Make Part. The first part is going to be the wheel. Now let's select the corresponding sketch from the tree. Since we're working in millimeters, we need to change the template. Currently, the Imperial template is selected. Let's go to the Metric tab and select the standard template in millimeters. Click OK. Place part and target assembly is checked. I'll stick with the default name for the assembly. The location will be folder 27. And let's change the template here to the millimeter version as well. Select standard in millimeters, assembly, OK. And OK again. And here we have our first part. Let's double click and create an extrusion for the part. It'll be 10 millimeters in depth. Let's change the color now. Let's say black. Here's our first part. Let's return to the layout sketch. And now we'll create our second part. Make part. It'll be the crank, so let's name it appropriately. Let's change the template as we did previously metric, metric standard millimeters. Since the assembly already exists, we don't have the option to select the template, the file location, the folder for lesson 27. Let's select the sketch, crank, OK, and OK. Let's right click on the wheel and unselect visibility. Double click on the crank now. Extrude. Select the profile. 10 millimeter extrusion. OK. Now we need to create a second extrusion. Let's right click on the crank. Make the sketch visible. OK, let's activate the extrude command. Mid plane extrusion, depth of 20 millimeters, and OK. Let's change the color now, let's say to green. And let's hide the sketch. Right click, unselect visibility. Let's return to our assembly now. Lastly, here we need to create the base. Make part. We'll call it base. Select the metric template in millimeters. And select the appropriate sketch from the tree on the left. Located in the folder for lesson 27. Let's click OK. And let's right click and hide the crank. Double click on the base. Extrude command. Select the first profile. 20 millimeter extrusion. Accept. And once again, we need to make the sketch visible. Right click, visibility, extrude. Select this profile and this one. 10 millimeters. And let's change the extrusion direction. OK. Lastly, a 10 millimeter extrusion here. And OK. Let's change the color of the base now to blue, for example. And let's right click and hide this sketch now. Visibility. Let's return to our assembly. As you see, the wheel and the crank are currently grounded. Let's make them visible. And now let's unselect the grounded option. We're ready to apply some constraints. We'll use the insert type of constraint. Select here. Apply. This edge. And this edge. Apply. Let's test our mechanism now. 
Of course, at this point, if I rotate the crank, nothing happens. First, we need to create a contact set. Let's right-click on the crank, select Contact Set. Now the wheel, right-click Contact Set. Let's go to the Tools tab, Document Settings, Modeling tab. Under Interactive Contact, select Contact Set Only, Apply, and Close. Now when I move the crank, the wheel rotates. Let's apply an angle constraint now. And I'm going to drive that constraint. First, let's create a line. I'll double click on the crank, select this face, right click, and new sketch. Activate the line tool. Let's place our line here to here. Right click and done. Finish the sketch. Return to the assembly. Let's go to the assemble tab. Activate the constraint command, angle constraint. Let me just rotate the view a little bit to make it easier to select our edges here. Okay, let's select this edge. And the new line. The angle value, 0 degrees. Apply and cancel. Now let's right click and select Drive Constraint. Angular value, let's say, 720 for the end position. Let's play forward. And as you can see, the mechanism is now in action. We follow the progress from the start to end positions on the title bar. And now let's play it backward. OK. Let's cancel out of the Drive Constraint window. And let's save our assembly. OK. And this concludes our second lesson on building an internal Geneva mechanism. Next, we're going to look at an external Geneva mechanism.